So there are a lot of headlines, videos, news articles going around about whether or not reality is a simulation. So I wanted to speak about this, and the more that I thought about this, the more it hit me what an incredible pointer the word simulation is. But being a scientist and saying that there's a 50-50 chance that reality is a simulation, I also find hysterically funny um, because we're always splitting things down the middle um, and not actually looking at the separation. So essentially the question to me is asking whether reality is real or unreal. And it's not to say that reality is suddenly unreal but that the line that separates real and unreal is not. Um, and I think that might be one of the misunderstandings people have with non-dual pointings is that it's saying it's unreal. It's saying that the real is unreal. But what it's saying is that that separation isn't there. And when we look at why there's a sense of separation, we always come back to thought. So in thought, it seems to be, it simulates somehow reality. So a thought, a tree, and an image, a tree, is a simulation of a tree. It's not the actual thing. Can you get to the actuality? The actuality isn't a thing because to have a thing and to have material, you have to have separation. So we call it the hard problem of consciousness. Hard as in it's really solid matter, material. Um, and how hysterically funny is that? And then to say that there's a 50-50 chance that reality is a simulation, not looking at the duality. It's hilarious. But that simulation um, piece is an incredible pointer to realize the creativity of thought to simulate. Because how do you get an idea? How do you get momentum to move forward to actually manifest, not saying that it actually really does, but appears so, without thought seeming to be that? So thoughts are simulations or approximations. And so words are almost like the building blocks of thought, although thought does not necessarily have to be expressed in words. I highly suggest expressing thoughts in words because then the awareness of them, which is ultimately what's never separate, consciousness, awareness, whatever pointing term you want for, for something that's not separate, we can see um, the connotations around the words that we're using. And so the connotation of simulation or the connotation of unreal is that something has lost its authenticity, its magic, its genuineness in some way. And magic is a great word because it kind of crosses the real and unreal and shows you can have your cake and eat it too. You can create, you can drop perspectives that feel bad to hold without losing anything whatsoever. So essentially all of my videos are about listening to feeling guidance rather than believing your thoughts, believing the simulation to be the actual thing. And so when you think a thought that feels awful, that guidance is coming straight and direct in the present moment from awareness. And it is letting you know that you are not separate. So every time that we have a thought that 
feels bad, there's an assumption of separation there. And because we are never separate from awareness, we have that feeling guidance. It's the most simple, the most obvious, the most stunningly beautiful thing, and yet it's so overlooked. So reality doesn't lose anything. It doesn't lose any of its punch. Love, love for another, enthusiasm, creativity, any of it doesn't lose anything in the realization that thought is a simulation. Instead, it's actually understanding how things are created. So thought works on this principle of momentum. And momentum is such an incredible thing to understand because it helps us to realize when we keep thinking thoughts that feel bad to think, that we're digging ourselves deeper, so to speak, and the less clearly we can see. Because clarity, wisdom, true intelligence, if you will, is thinking in thoughts that are aligned with feeling or aligned with awareness or aligned with this knowledge that separation is for thought, is for creation. Black and white makes beautiful, stunning contrast, but is never ever worth suffering for because it is not real. Because, like it was a simulation, like you were in a game, Nothing, essentially, is ever lost. And there's that paradox, so to speak, not that there's one or the other separation that can make a paradox, but there's that paradox of if we take life so, so seriously, like this is our one chance, this is all we've got, we've got to make it or else, we've got to make this beautiful life, we've got to love all the people, have all the things, see all the places, all of it, or it's a failure, or the opposite perspective of it means nothing, it amounts to nothing. <laughs> you see how each one of those perspectives, again, isn't actually separate, but each one results in a feeling less than stellar. And so that's what I mean with this non-separation. You can have your cake and eat it too. You can love to the fullest and realize that nothing is ever lost. You can feel grief to the fullest and realize that it's none other than love. You can put your all into a project and realize that it doesn't really matter whether anybody likes it or not. It's really the best of both worlds. No world, no simulated world, no real world. The best of both and neither. <laughs>